Okay, everybody, we're going to get going on this tonight. Burlington City Council, meeting number six, March 16th, 2020, 530 of the Thomas J. Smith Council Chambers, City Hall. Please join me with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Kathleen, roll call, please. Billups. Here. Kreitzer. I am here. Graham Murray. Present. Maupin. Rinker. Here. All right. First on the uh, agenda is the consent agenda. All matters listed under item one, consent agen agenda, have, having been discussed, are considered to be routine by City Hall, or City Council, I'm sorry, and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items. If discussion is desired, that item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered separately. On the consent, we have the finances and miscellaneous, which is minutes of previous meetings, payroll and city claims, beer, liquor, wine, and cigarette permits, reports and bonds, resolutions, number one, resolution approving nuisance abatements for various properties, number two, resolution approving fees for rental housing inspection, number three, resolutions approving Corrective legal description for the sale of a vacated portion of the former alley right of way located north of the property at 2408 2410 Flint Hills Drive, City of Burlington. Number four, resolution awarding contract for the 2019 Lewis Street, repair, Street Sewer Repair Project. Number five, resolution approving a Title VI non discrimination assurances and Title VI non discrimination agreement. Number six, resolution approving the city of Burlington to hold the Great River Bridge race. Number seven, resolution granting permission to sign off on correspondence and forms required for the Iowa Economic Development Authority for the Locust Basin Sewer Project. And we have set date for public hearings. Number one, consideration for sale of a property locally known as 1021 North 8th Street, Burlington, Iowa with conditions April 6th. Number two is consideration for a sale of a proper property locally known as 704 South Central Avenue, Burlington, Iowa, with conditions April 6th. Number three is consideration of a proposed ordinance amending Chapter 163A.07 of the Burlington, Iowa Code of Ordinances concerning hearing rights in the case of junk vehicles April 6th. Number four is consideration of an application for housing sustainability grant for the Iowa Economic Development Authority. Community Development Block Grant Program, April 6th. Number five is consideration of plans and specifications for the 2020 Senior Center Roof Replacement Project, April 6th. Number six is consideration for plans and specifications for the 2020 West Avenue Gear Avenue Dow Bar Retrofit Project, that's April 6th. Number seven is consideration for the plans and specifications for the 2020 Virginia Avenue and Sycamore Street Stormwater Improvements, April 6th, and number eight, consideration of a consolidated transit grant application, April 20th, 2020, and we have the following appointments, City Planning Commission, Florence Paternal, and <coughs> Historic Preservation Commission, Stephanie Brakesville. Is there anyone in the audience who would like one of these items removed off the consent agenda? Council? No. I'd like to have two removed. Number two. Okay. Uh, anything else? <clears throat> no, I was just going to say if you're ever on the struggle bus when you're reading, I'll help you out. But... That's all right. That's a lot to go for. Okay, so I need a motion to close. I would approve the consent. Well, uh, Your Honor, I have a motion to approve all items listed under item one of the consent agenda <laughs> minus item number two, which was the resolution approving <laughs> fees for the rental housing inspection. Second. Mo uh, motion, motion made and seconded. Uh, Kathleen? Billups? Yes. Kreitzer? Yes. Graham Murray? Yes. Rinker? Yes. Number in hearings, number one, we have a st statement consideration of fiscal year 2021 budget. S that step? Yes. Fire away. So everyone should have a copy of what I'm just going to go over. So. 
breeze through this pretty quickly, so just stop me if you guys have any questions. Um, so we, you know, met most of January going over the proposed FY21 budget. Um, the budget was presented balanced with no tax increase. Sorry, can't get the PowerPoint here. It froze up. Well, anyway, on the first sheet, um, we have um, just the comparison of revenues um, by fund. You can see the different funds that we budget for. Um, our total for FY21 is about $62 million, $804. Um, basically, that's just slightly up from the fiscal year 20. Um, in the general fund, the increases, just the slight increase we'll get on taxes. Um, sales tax is budgeted to be up a little bit along with road use tax. And then here's just um, the revenues broken down a different way. You can see 20% of the revenues we get are from property taxes. Um, we're bonding to get 17% of the revenues. Um, we have um, intergovernmental, which that includes grants, state, and federal, and local. Um, road use tax falls into that $9.3 million. Um, and that's road use tax is 3.4 million. Backfill is about a half a million in there. Um, we get transit grants that fall in there for about 772,000. And then the fire and ambulance grants that we get the, is about 640,000. Um, also in that non-property tax category, which is 9% of our revenues, that's where um, is budgeted the hotel motel tax and the local option sales tax for 4.2 million. And then charges for service is 30% of our revenue. And that also includes waterworks. Um, we're state required to budget with waterworks. So waterworks is 5.9 million of that 18 million. And then the rest, um, our sewer is about 7 million budgeted revenues. Solid waste is 2 million and ambulance is about 1.5 million. So then looking on the total budgeted expenditures we have for FY21, again, very similar um, amount as revenues budgeted um, and just a slight increase. Um, you'll see one of the larger increases is in the public safety function. Um, that basically makes up the increase in wages and pension expense we have. And then we also did include um, the part-time evidence clerk in police department moving to full-time. So this um, bar or chart, pie chart shows you how those expenditures break down by the different areas. 33% um, of our expenditures are wages and benefits, um, which is the personnel services. Um, debt service makes up all our principal and interest payments. That's 14%. Capital outlay, um, that's where we um, budget all our capital projects for the year. So the larger ones um, is the sewer protection that we're going to build, $4.2 million. And then our sewer separation, 5.1 million, is also included there. Commodities is just another word for supplies. That makes up 4% of our expenditures. And then contractual services is kind of the catch-all for everything else. Um, but of that 15 million, 5.6 of that is waterworks expenditures. So then the 10, mil the 10 million is what's left um, that are actual city expenses. So as you can see here, I just have a history of our proposed prop property tax rate. It is the same as it was last year, no increase. This is the third year um, that we've had not an increase. And then this just shows you the history of um, when we've had the increases in the past. And then this just um, this slide just shows you um, what we will um, collect based on the property tax levies. Um, the total amount is $12.7 million. And then again, broken down by those um, different levies that we have authorization to, um, to bill. One thing is um, we always like to point out that um, our other employee benefits levy, we could raise that, again, raising the tax rate. But we do have room um, because we are not taxing for all our employee benefits. What we have always said is that we use um, the remaining cost to cover our employee <coughs> benefits. We use the sales tax revenue that we get. Um, so we transfer 2.3 million from loss to cover employee benefits there so that we don't have to increase that tax rate. 
And here we just like to show um, if you have a $100,000 assessed residential house, um, what your taxes is going to look like for FY21. I know we already said there's no change in tax rate, but the, what they will pay for city taxes will go down a little bit because we had a decrease in the rollback. So in FY20, you'd pay about $930 on that $100,000 house. This coming year for FY21, you're going to pay about $900. On the commercial tax rate side, um, again, there's no change. The rollback is set. That doesn't change, so there's no increase in taxes um, and, you know, unless somebody has a change in their assessed value. So here's where we break down that $900 that you've paid in those um, city taxes for that $100,000 valuation house. It kind of shows you where that money goes. The fire department's going to be $164, police $281. Uh, libraries, $57. Um, the Parks and Recs Department, this includes auditorium, port, senior center, forestry, day camp, pool, that's $61. Debt service um, is going to be $209. Um, public works is $38, and that's our engineering and transit and depot. Community development's $18. Uh, that's where building code and development it goes into. And then general administration is $72 of that. And that's where city council, city manager, clerk, finance, IT, HR, legal insurance all rolls up into that. So just kind of gives you a good idea where the money goes. And here you would have seen this too when we did our budget presentations when we started, where we fall compared to the other Iowa cities with $20,000 population, or sorry, 20,000 people population. Um, we rank, we're pretty much kind of seven from the bottom, which is exactly where we were last year. Um, but you can see based on our census and our taxable value, it breaks it down what our value per capita is. And you can see the lower the, per, the taxable capita value, usually the higher um, the tax rate. You know, as you go down to the bottom, you see with the Tumwa. Um, so, unfortunately, we don't have um, a larger taxable value to to spread out what we need to keep the services the same. So I'll just go through some of the <coughs> factors that have impacted the budget. Um, this year, we just saw a slight increase in valuation, 1.84, 1.85 in the TIF. Um, so when you compare the property taxes we're going to get this year to last year, it's an increase of 222447 So not a lot, not a very large increase. Health insurance, um, we did budget that at 5%. It did come in with a 0% increase, so that will help us out um, on not having that larger increase in the, in the valuation. And then you can see um, the IPERS pension stayed the same, but the fire and police um, pension did go up uh, just a little less than 1%. So this recaps a little explanation on the agreements we have with our um, union contracts, where for the this next year is the fifth year that we have this cap in place where we cannot um, raise the health insurance premiums greater than 5%. Um, also in FY21, the employee contribution is 10%. So we, again, you'll see FY20, the amounts are the same because we had a zero increase in our premiums. So we fell underneath those cap increases. So we could keep the insurance benefits the same this year. So for fiscal 21, this breaks down our general fund revenues. Um, the largest thing we bring in for the general fund, of course, is property taxes. That's 50%. You see we have a slight increase of 120000 That's the increase in valuation. Um, intergovernmental, there's a slight increase, too. Um, but other than that, you're just seeing steady, steady, um, steady revenues there. Um, we had a 2.48% increase overall in our general fund revenues. So on the general fund expenditure side, too, um, real, um, again, we had a 2.79 increase there. The total expenditures increased about a half a million dollars. The largest you'll see increases was in fire and police. 
Again, that's wages and pensions that have increased, and then that part-time evidence tech we moved to full-time for the police department. Other than that, you can see the breakdown of all the other departments are pretty much um, not large increases at all, and some even have decreases. So overall, when you look at the general fund, um, it does look strange. Our revenues are only 13 million, but our expenditures are 20 million. Um, but you, you have to take an account and look at the transfers that we transfer in um, for the general fund. What we transfer into general fund is that local option sales tax. Um, about a million of that gets transferred in to cover police expenses, and then we cover the other, or another 2.5 gets transferred in to cover um, the benefits. So that's 3.5 of that 7.6 million we transfer in. And then we also have those levies, the employee benefit levy and the emergency management levy. Those total about 2.7 million. Those have to be receded into a special fund and then we transfer them back into the general fund. And then we have our other um, departments, the prop, um, business type departments like sewer, solid waste, um, road use, VM and PM that we transfer in about a million to cover some general expenses. So when you look at the total revenues and transfers being brought into the general fund, it's about 21 million. And then that we're having a slight um, decrease overall in the general fund this year by $30,000. Um, the transfer out of the general fund is the hotel motel. That is required by state law that it gets receded into the general fund, but then once we get it, we, we take it out. So we're slightly just, again, close to break even like we were for our last year budget. So just some quick overviews of the sewer fund. Um, this is where we, you know, the wastewater treatment plant expenses go, the lift station, the sewer lines. Um, we've got increased, of course, operating costs there. And for us to um, manage our compliance with the EPA, we've budgeted a 3% increase in the non-metered sewer and stormwater fees and a 10% increase for the metered, in the metered um, sewer users. In the solid waste fund, um, we have budgeted a quarter per month for each of the different carts. Um, recycling, there is an uh, increase of 10 cents per household per month, um, and that is included in those monthly cart fees. Um, and that's just a pass along expense. That's the increase we're getting from the Des Moines County um, Regional Landfill um, of that recycling fee. So, and then they also did not have any increase in the land tipping fees. So. And here's just kind of a laundry list of the different CIP projects that we've budgeted for this year. Our big one is the flood protection. Um, then we have uh, some sewer rehab, and then we also have our seal coat and um, street reconstruction. Those are the larger ones. Hotel motel tax fund, this is where 7% is collected on, collected on all the hotel stays in the city of Burlington. Um, we utilize it for culture and recreation opportunities. Um, this year we did, um, it is a slight increase from last year. The first 70,000 is split between the city and the Conventional Visitors Bureau. We get 70%, they get 30, and then anything budgeted after 700,000 is a 60-40 split. So of that 925,000 we have budget, or bud budgeted revenues, we're gonna, we have expenditures of 921, 135. And you can see there's just the breakdown in our different categories. Um, you know, a lot of it is in our special projects where the 180,000, um, that goes to the general fund to cover our recreation items in the general fund. 160 is to help out the recplex and 55,000 for the golf course. And then the sales tax fund, which we also call the local option sales tax fund, that's the penny that is voted, um, that will be available to us through December 31st, 2022. We use 50% of those proceeds for property tax relief. And then the rest of it, um, a lot of it goes to capital improvements. Um, we do, you know, public safety. So this year we've budgeted revenues of 4.2 million. Our expenditures, though, total 4.6 million, so we're gonna use some of our fund balance in that fund this year with the expenditures. 
So you can see that first line item is the property tax relief, which is the 2.3 million. That all will be transferred into the general fund. Then the next two items, um, 862,000, that we say that's for funding for about eight officers. We transfer that into the general fund. And then the police vehicles and equipment we buy each year gets transferred into the general fund. Um, so again, just kind of a laundry list of the things we use that money for. Two pages of it too, so there's a lot. We do have budgeted an ambulance in this next year to be 260,000 out of sales tax. So then here's um, just a recap of our legal debt margin. Um, we're required by the state to uh, um, not go over 5% um, of our assessed value. So our debt limit for FY21 is 70951825. million um, We're projected to have 42 million 440 of that debt. Um, so we'll be um, just right around 60%, which is under our financial policy of 70. You can see under the projected 2020, there's a time where we do, we're at 70.62. That's just kind of a timing thing. Um, so we're, again, right, right at our 70%. And then I just show you the last two years where we've, we've come into. So. And that's all I have. If anybody has any questions, I know that's pretty fast. But we've kind of been over most of that information. So it's just like a recap. But. Anything to add? No, I think just open it up to the public for any comments or questions. Is there, is there anybody in the, the audience that would have a question? Seeing none, anybody on council? Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Mr. Governor. Yep, thank you. Good job. Can I get a motion to close, please? Oh, you're going to have a motion to close. Second. Kathleen? Phillips? Aye. Kreitzer? Yes. Graham Murray? Yes. Maupin? Yes. Brinker. Aye. You're going to have a resolution adopting budget for fiscal year 2020, 2021. Second. Kathleen, when you're ready. Phillips? Aye. Kreitzer? Yes. Graham Murray? Yes. Maupin? Yes. Brinker? Aye. Your Honor, I have a resolution authorizing fund transfers for the fiscal year 2021. Second. So in your packet is the resolution. This is a, a requirement that we have for the state now to show you the fund that's initiating the transfer and the fund that's receiving the transfer. Um, so since we've kind of just gone over the whole budgeting process, I thought it would be easier just to go ahead and get these approved. These are in the budget. Um, if for some reason these fan these transfer amounts would change through fiscal year 21, I cannot go over these amounts, so I would have to come back to you and get a new transfer approved. So this is just a way for us to show you and the public where we're transferring the money from and why. So, so as you talk about that, for example, on the first one on there is the, uh, in the exhibit A is the employee benefit transfer uh, revenues collected for employee benefits transferred to the general fund, $2.6 million. That is an up to amount. Uh, we will transfer over the actual amount that is collected in property taxes in that category, which most likely will be just a tad under that. Uh, if it were to be more than that, Stephanie would have to have an, a subsequent resolution as, as we got to the, towards the end of that fiscal year authorizing a, the additional transfer. Any questions or concerns from the audience? Council? Kathleen? Phillips? Aye. Kreitzer? Yes. Graham Murray? Aye. Maupin? Yes. Brinker? Aye. All right, number two is the consideration of plans and specifications for the 2020 Central <coughs> HMA resurfacing project. Nick, I can see it chomping at the bit. Well, I forgot, there. I didn't see there was two resolutions, so I was all ambitious to get up here. Uh, so the plans and specifications in front of you are for uh, a hot mix asphalt uh, mill and overlay project on Central uh, from Angular South to Harrison Street. Uh, the, we, we discussed this in the five-year road plan uh, with a little bit different estimate on it. Uh, the change in the estimate is about $100,000 from seven hundred and twenty dollars uh, to $821,000. Uh, the reason for the change in the estimate is the, the, the binder that's used in the, in the aggregate. Uh, it's used more for 
higher traveled roadway similar to what we used on Mount Pleasant Street. Uh, so that's a change in the estimate number. I uh, we'll, guess we'll see what we get uh, from a big number. But um, I don't know if you want to review the traffic control plan. There was a question at the work session about um, the Locust Street sewer separation project and uh, this project here. There will be the intersection of Central and South. Uh, there's an alleyway behind uh, be this, just to the east of Central between Pine and South uh, that will have some conflict. But we will be moving a lot slower with the sewer separation um, just because it's at the <coughs> furthest extent to the west of where we would be uh, kind of conflicting with this HMA project. So we'll push the, the contractor to work towards the northern side of the HMA project uh, so they should get them past uh, the project extent of where Locust Street will be. So there is a conflict in that area and uh, we won't try and have both the, the road and the alleyway tore up at the same time, so. Okay. Yeah. And then the increase in cost on Central was because what you're hoping for is the road will last longer. Ultimately, the binder, you know, you know, if you choose a, a binder that's used more on residential, it won't hold up as long uh, okay. if you have higher traffic patterns. It's a collector that, road. That Central so. has. Central is a collector, and it sees between three and 4,000 cars per day. Mm. Okay. So. Just want to make sure everybody understood yep. that. Okay. Any other questions for Nick Council? Oh, good. Is there anybody in the audience that has any questions or concerns? Seeing none. Motion to close? Uh, motion to close. Second. Phillips? Aye. Kreitzer? Yes. Cranberry? Yes. Maupin? Yes. Ranker? Yes. Uh, you have a resolution approving plans and specifications for the 2020 Central Avenue HMA resurfacing project. Second. When you are ready, Kathleen. Phillips? Aye. Kreitzer? Yes. Cranberry? Moppin? Yes. Brinker? Yes. Okay. You all right down there? Yeah. All right. Uh, next up, we have a resolution. Resolution number one. Bill? Okay. Uh, resolution authorizing bond purchase agreement for general obligation refunding bonds series 2020A and series 2020B. Second. This is a resolution with the bond purchase agreements for uh, refinancing uh, several past issues, a couple of them that are taxable that are incorporated into Series 2020B, several that are uh, <coughs> qualified for uh, non-taxation uh, beyond me for worrying about, but it's a better, better in interest rate for us, the Series 2020A refinancing. As you look through the list that's on there, uh, you see bond issues 2013A, 2013B, 2013C, 2014A, 2015A. These are all bond issues that were done quite a few years ago and have gotten to the point where they are now callable, where you can refinance them essentially. Uh, we, have, we are not looking to extend any of the repayment schedules. We were looking at doing, uh, calling these bonds and refinancing them purely for cost savings. Uh, when, when we were doing this process and started it a couple of months ago, uh, we were, in, in fact, when Travis was here uh, end of February, mid-February mid in his presentation, we were looking at about a $300,000 savings on these. Um, and we were looking at least that a week ago. Uh, at this point, we don't know whether we have the potential to get any savings at all. The financial market has completely uh, turned upside down in the last week. Um, so there, as a consequence, this resolution, resolution has some authorization language that's a little different than typical. Uh, instead of a fixed sale date, uh, we have more of a authorization for us to sign new bonds if and when we can get bonds to a position where there is enough savings to justify uh, doing the refinancing. Uh, it may be that we are able to find a time over the next couple of weeks where that is appropriate that we can refinance all of these. It may be that it's only a select few of these that we're able to have enough savings in it to justify. Uh, so there's a little bit more flexibility that's written into this resolution than what we have done typically in past years. Uh, it's, we are in different times right now. Yeah. So. 
Okay, so anybody has any concerns or thoughts from the audience? Council? Seeing none, Kathleen? Phillips? Aye. Kreitzer? Yes. Graham Murray? Aye. Maupin? Aye. Rinker? Aye. Okay, next up we have a resolution announcing temporary limitation of mass gatherings or large community events on city properties or in city facilities. These next three reso resolutions. Need a second on that. I need a second. 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 These next three resolutions were not on the agenda as published last uh, Friday. These have all been added uh, with the the guidance that came out of CDC Center for Disease Control uh, yesterday, and then also from Governor Reynolds' office and the Iowa Department of Public Health on uh, just the evidence of substantial community spread. We've got a different set of circumstances that have put us into a little into a more of an emergency uh, response on what we need to do um, these have been added as a result with less than a 24 hours based on those emergency conditions um, do you want me to read it go ahead because I'm can't even remember where we're at on this <clears throat> okay <clears throat> excuse me this is a resolution announcing temporary limitation of mass gatherings or large community events on city city property or in city facilities, whereas it is currently recommended that individuals refrain from large pu public gatherings due to concerns regarding person-to-person -person transmission of the COVID-19 virus, and whereas the Center for Disease Control is, has issued guidance on March 15, 2020, recommending for the next eight weeks all events consisting of 50 or more people should be canceled or, or postponed, and whereas the President's current coronavirus guidelines for the America released March 16, 2020, recommend groups avoiding 10 or more people for the next 15 days. And whereas it is anticipated that there may be further guidance from the CDC or from the Iowa Department of Public Health that place further restrictions on the size of groups and types of events covered or the time the restrictions should be in place. Therefore, be it resolved as follows, the City Council of the City of Burlington of Iowa hereby is canceling or postponing any events held on city property or in city buildings of 50 or more people through May 10, 2020. Be it further resolved that the City Council of the City of Burlington, Iowa is further canceling and postponing all events held on city property or in city buildings of 10 or more people through March 26, 2020. Be it further resolved that the mayor is authorized to extend or shorten this time frame on an emergency basis as well as place further restrictions on the size of groups that may meet based on updated information from the CDC, the President's Coronavirus Guidelines for America, or from the Iowa Depa Department of Public Health. Approved and adopted this day, the 16th of March, 2020. One thing I would note is I would ask for an amendment on that uh, for the, the 10 or more people. That should be through March 31. I can't count to 15. Okay. Um, these were done very quickly uh, and actually modified as a, as I was writing them as new announcements came through uh, trying to do our best just to keep up um, and I would anticipate that there will be further guidance from all these entities over the next few days and weeks uh, so do you need an official amendment then mm -hmm. Kathleen can I make it yeah oh, okay so I, I move to amend uh, the line where it says the city property and city buildings at 10 or more people through March 31st, 2020. Second. Second. Can we have a motion on the resolution? Actually, we'll vote on the motion, motion to amend as amended first. first. Oh. Okay. Billups? Aye. Kreitzer? Yes. Graham Murray? Aye. Maupin? Aye. Rinker? Aye. And now? As amended. Right. M Billups? Aye. Kreitzer? Yes. Graham Murray? Yes. Maupin? Aye. Rinker? Aye. Okay, moving on. <clears throat> resolution number three is a resolution authorizing the mayor to alter provisions for city services or limit access to city facilities as necessary on an emergency basis. Jim? A second. Oh, second. Second. Jim? All right, so, and as we have, uh, in terms of our reservations where we have groups that have reserved and there's a fee to to do those reservations we'll reimburse for those fees i don't makes it a little bit more awkward for bre to be caught in the center of this uh, operating the auditorium and 
I know this is a, a tough, that's a tough issue for working through down there. Um, this uh, resolution here just again is, ex is looking at we have uh, a, pub a public health crisis uh, that we're dealing with and we, we are going to face some dis decisions that need to be made on access to different facilities and services over the next uh, few weeks. There may be very few, there may be several and extensive. Uh, but based off of our best advice for, that we received from the CDC, uh, from the Iowa Department of Public Health, uh, from the, the president, uh, we want to make sure that, that uh, there's an understanding the mayor will use the authority that's given to him by state code uh, to make the, uh, the, the changes that we need to do to try to make sure that we protect the, the safety and, and health of the public as well as our employees. And, try, and trying to accomplish what the whole goal here is, and that's just to limit the spread of COVID. Do you want me to read this one so you, there's no doubt? You can. Okay. Resolution of authorizing the mayor to alter provision of the city services or limit access to city facilities as necessary on an emergency basis. Whereas COVID-19 poses a serious threat to public health and the safety of the city of Burlington, Iowa, as outlined by the Center of for disease control and whereas the Iowa Department of Public Health has now determined that community spread of COVID-19 has occurred in the state of Iowa and whereas the section 372.142 of the Code of Iowa 2019 grant the mayor's power to declare an emergency and govern through proclamation to protect health and safety of the citizens of Burlington. Therefore, be it resolved as follows, the mayor and the city council of Burlington, Iowa hereby declare the following that a state of emergency or public danger exists within the city of Burlington because of the threat of the spread of the COVID-19 virus, that the access to various facilities and services may be limited as necessary to protect the public health by mayoral proclamation on, on long and ongoing basis as circ circumstances dictate based on the continuation and extent of the emergency be it further resolved that the mayor is authorized to extend or shorten this time frame of the emergency basis based on updated information from the CDC or the Iowa Department of Public Health. Is there any questions from the audience on that? Anybody from council have any concerns? Kathleen? Phillips? Aye. Kreitzer? Aye. Graham Murray? Aye. Maupin? Aye. Raker? Aye. Okay, and then the third one of this group is a resolution announcing temporary electronic public meetings. I need a second. Second. Very much the same yes, as we try to limit uh, uh, the amount of interactions with groups uh, and 10 or more in some of the recommendations, 50 or more in others, uh, trying to do our best to get uh, meetings electronic. Uh, this uh, allows, and I assume that you'll read through this too, but it allows for uh, us to get a platform uh, in place that allows for electronic participation in meetings from, from the public, uh, allows for call-in from, well, we already have the ability for council who aren't present to, to have a call-in. Um, so those that are present is, is fine. Those who have to call in as part of that process is, is, is acceptable as well. Um, that's for the foreseeable future, beginning with the next work session. We have similar provisions in this ordinance for other uh, committees and uh, groups, uh, whether it's the Planning Commission or uh, Riverfront Commission or committee, uh, or whatever the committee is within uh, our city structures. Uh, this calls for uh, the the cessation of those meetings through the end of, I think it has, I had that written through the end of next month. Um, though the time frame is flexible, even if it's one way or the other. It says we're practical until we're, further notice. In, so until further notice. Well, and my thought is it's probably through the end of April. Right. I didn't put that in. Um, most meetings we don't, we would, recommend that we don't have. Uh, we have planning commission meetings that we may have to hold as time goes on. Uh, Board of Adjustments are ones that, that have some requirements, but where practical, this resolution would say that we would do those by electronic means as well. 
uh, in regards to when this goes into effect for these uh, boards and com committees, uh, that would be effective March 18, beginning Wednesday. Okay. And even though our family has 11 people in it, I'm hoping that we're allowed to still meet with all with all 11 of us <laughs> at, at home. So. I don't know, Jim. It says 10. I know. <laughs> have to split them up. All right. I'll go ahead and read this one as well. This is a resolution announcing temporary electronic public meetings, whereas it is currently recommended that individuals refrain from large public gatherings due to concerns regarding person-to-person -person transmission of the COVID virus, and whereas Iowa Code Chapter 21, as interpreted, as interpreted, permits public meetings to be held electronically, provided all participants can either hear or see the meeting, and provided the council and the public can participate whereas technology exists to hold these meetings electronically. Therefore, it is resolved as follows. Beginning City Council's meeting on March 23rd, 2020, the City will conduct its meetings electronically until further notice. Uh, number two, that the Mayor, the Council, the Clerk, and City Manager shall meet as usual or through telephone, telephonic I'm sorry, means at the time and place scheduled for all regular special council meetings. The proceedings will be broadcast as usual, live as usual. The public shall be provided a detailed notice compliant with Chapter 21.4 of the Iowa Code, including all necessary information for electronic participation, including all call-in numbers and procedures. And number five, the city staff is directed to research and prepare an electronic format via telephone and or video link where the public may listen in in real time to the meeting and where the public participants will be placed in a queue until called on upon by the mayor. Be it further resolved that all other meetings beginning March 18, 2020 of committees and boards will be suspended where practical until further notice. For those committees and boards that still need to hold meetings, those meetings will be conducted electronically through a similar format as the city council meetings. Be it further resolved that the mayor is authorized to reinstate normal meeting process for the city council and its boards and committees as circumstances dictate. Therefore, be it resolved that the city council, by the city council, that the city manager and or city clerk shall work with city staff to carry out this directive and use their best judgment to ensure city business continues and meetings are held efficiently. So anyone has any concerns in the audience? Council? I heard you take a deep breath. Go it's, ahead. It's getting weird, ain't it? Yeah. Um, um, so this, this is be by Zoom, or how will we do this? That go is ahead. one of the options. It's zo yeah. Zoom via or go to meeting. I mean, some, one of those types of formats. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Next week's meeting is a special council meeting, mm -hmm. so uh, that is one that uh, has very is is a is a closed session. So there will be very little to, to have involvement with anyway. Uh, so this really gives us two weeks to get to a spot where we have a, a good structure for how we're getting this done. Was that our day off? It was. It was. Okay. That's what I thought. Okay. Jim decided we didn't need that. Thanks. All right. I'm sorry. Should we vote, Kathleen? Yes. Phillips? Aye. Kreitzer? Yes. Graham Murray? Aye. Maupin? Aye. Rinker? Aye. Okay, then the resolution from the consent resolution approving fees for rental housing and inspections. Uh, Mr. I Tisley. need a second. Oh, second. Second. Mr. Tisley. Um, you want to cover that again? Sure. So we're looking to uh, update uh, rental housing uh, inspection fees. These were last updated by the council in 2017. At that time, a minor change was made, essentially 16 cents per month increase per single family duplex. Uh, 27 cents per threeplex and above. Uh, it was previously updated in 2013 uh, at a lesser amount uh, at that time. Um, we've evaluated the cost of rental housing program further and reviewed fees for comparable communities in Iowa. Uh, based on the cost of covering uh, the whole cost of one individual from the inspection division, uh, the increase in rental fees is, uh, I guess, formatted to cover that cost of one full individual within the inspection division, um, including salary, cost for vehicles, uh, <coughs> iWorks program, all those other associated costs. 
Uh, this doesn't take into account additional staff time devoted to rental housing uh, beyond the rental inspectors, uh, including project coordinator who does uh, permits and fees, uh, chief code inspector consults on code issues, uh, planning and zoning staff review, uh, unit maximums and parking requirements. So we're just looking at how do we cover one full employee cost, um, knowing that there's still other costs uh, associated with the program. Um, with the increase in the rental fees, it would also allow the fees to, to more cover the cost of the program and allow the continuation of the seasonal nuisance inspector position. Um, I briefly mentioned that during the uh, budget presentation. Uh, without the increase in fees, this position likely would need to be eliminated based on budgeted costs and revenues. Um, currently, we are uh, approximately 28 cents below the average per unit uh, per month for comparable community rental fees. Um, Clinton, Fort Dodge, Marshalltown, Mason City, Muscatine, Ottumwa. Uh, that is difficult to uh, kind of put in a formula because they all have different programs as well. Um, we have the three-year and check inspection cycle for threeplex and above, five-year for single-family duplex. Other communities do things differently. Um, so our recommendation was to look at uh, what our costs are, trying to cover that cost a, a little more wholly. Um, realizing we're probably not covering the whole cost, but it does cover it a little more wholly and um, make those changes accordingly. Okay. Any concerns from the audience? Please come forward. If you would, when you get to the lectern, give us your name and address. And welcome. Um, Don Kalo, Easy Mac Properties and 1107 Summer Street. My concern with this is if we're, we, the landlords, are going to be responsible for paying an employee's salary, then that employee should be dedicated to our needs, not the entire city. And if the city wants to put on a full time person, then the city needs to absorb that through all of its citizens, not just landlords. That's my concern. Because they were just raised. Uh, you said 17? 2017, yep. Okay. So that's my concern. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. So noted. Anyone else in the audience? Council? Um, I just want to make the point that I made last week is, is, and I have rental property, so I'm going to abstain from this, um, but uh, there is a concern in the rental property market uh, that people already don't, rent, don't uh, properly register their property because of the fees associated with it. I think by raising it, we're just continuing to disincentivize that. So. Okay. Anybody else on council have any concerns? Sounds like Eric's done his research and we are 28 cents lower than other communities when you do the comparables. And I would sure hate to lose our nuisance inspector because by God, we sure need him. Okay. Anyone else? All right. Can I bring up another? Yeah, come on up. <coughs> Do I need to repeat my name? No, you're, you're okay. fine. You're you brought we, up a we good... Have a, we have a short memory, but long enough for that. Okay. <laughs> um, and Matt brought up another thing. What is the city doing in order to... What's the word I'm looking for? Um, if you go down the uh, DMC GIS and you see that this property here is owned by this company and you see he owns another one by the same company and the same one, how are we not? And you can't tell me that we're not, because we're not. Finding those persons who own that company, who own that property, and say, hey, if you want to continue to rent this out, you need to have a rental permit, and you need to pay for it. I feel like if I've got 42 places and I'm paying 42 rental permits, I figured that John Doe, who has 150 and only six of his, Mm -hmm. have issued rental permits. What kind of action is the city taking as far as tracking these persons down? This is a small town. You can ask any Tom, Dick, or Harry on the corner who owns what rental. And if they don't have a permit for it, then they're not contributing to the services that 
he's looking to add to. I would so, agree. There you go. That, I don't like my fair share, but everybody needs to be equal. We are aware that is something we continually evaluate. I know we do have an inspector that does have a, a list of properties that he's sent out notices on, continues to, and follows through that process on. I think that's a, a goal with some new staff as well to try and step up those efforts even further. But it is something that we do continually send out notices on. and. Um, Hopefully we were down staff for a while uh, throughout our inspection division, which isn't an excuse, but just the fact that we had fewer staff there. But uh, it is something our entirety of our inspection division is aware of and trying to work towards getting full compliance on that. So what's the options that you can't get a response from? You just shut the house down? We would have to issue, send, do, go through our process. Our code lays out the process of uh, certified notices and uh, I guess citing those sections of code and then we can order the correct to comply uh, with the lack of a rental permit and then order to uh, revoke or I guess evict. Okay. Uh, there's a, a process through the court system that we have to follow through, but okay. um, we have done that in the past. Uh, I, I think there has been some lacking on that and I think we need to step up further efforts on it. So please make sure we do. Mm -hmm. Is there any other thoughts or concerns? Oh, well, I'm gonna say if, if the concern is that we were gonna distance some of them um, this would address that and if the compromise here is if we're going to increase these rates that we are enforce the the owners that aren't properly having their pro yeah. okay so there's a little compromise there okay we work on that anyone else Kathleen can we have a vote please Billups aye Kreitzer aye Graham Murray Aye. Moppin? Aye. Rinker? I'm saying. Okay, uh, now it's time for, com for further comments from the audience. Uh, we'd like to hear your thoughts and concerns, but if it's not on the agenda, we may not be able to address it tonight. But is there any comments or concerns from the audience beyond what we've already discussed? Seeing none, go with staff. Everybody's in a different spot tonight, so I don't know. Don, did you have anything? Well, I could say. <laughs> I'm not really asking you to, Don. <laughs> just trying to be courteous. Are you, we're, okay, go ahead. <laughs> it's been in the newspaper, but the LEAF program begins a week from today with Friday's route being on Monday, followed by Monday's route on Tuesday, and so on and so forth. That's a three-week program required use of the yard waste bags, carts are not allowed, plastic bags are not allowed, garbage cans are not allowed, uh, and it is a curbside program even if your garbage is picked up in the alley. Got it. Now, um, on our next work session agenda, I believe we do have the citywide cleanup. We are fielding calls from people wanting to know the newsletter that we sent out, our waste paper, which typically goes out in June for the next fiscal year, indicated that the citywide cleanup was up for discussion and that people could call in March, which we're in March, and mm -hmm. people are calling and asking about the program, and we've been sharing with people that it was to have been discussed at the previous work session, and has been moved to the 30th. Uh, I have a few thoughts on that, but perhaps you would like me to wait on that. We could probably wait until it's on the work session and talk about it. Okay. Thank you, Don. You're welcome. Rhonda? Yes, just wanted to update you. You may have noticed if you follow the library on Facebook, and I hope you do, um, that we have postponed all programming at the library as a way to encourage people to practice that social distancing that we're hearing about and not to um, come out for special events that we're having. Um, as things changed over the weekend and we kept getting it, 
it was 50 um, when we at that time but you know we not all of our programs reached that amount but we felt it was best to cancel all of those for the immediate future okay thank you it's a shame but thank I you know. thank you hey, Rhonda I have a quick question for you so someone wanted to get a book electronically and they haven't done that before how what would they need to do call the library or you could walk them through it or what do they need to do well, we could do that sure um, okay. and we have some handouts available on that things will be adding up um, if you go to our click learn play section of our um, website okay. it lists all the different online resources they have available and if you have a library card um, basically you need that and your pin number but certainly people can contact us and we can try to walk them through okay. it over the phone too is Perfect. there um, our email is there the possibility that people that want to check out a book, let's say it gets real crazy and you just kind of have to shut it down, would uh, you guys be able to do like a curbside thing where you could run a book out to somebody? Um, yeah, we're, we're looking into that possibility. Um, I know other libraries have been um, promoting that they're going to be doing that. And um, coincidentally, when I was at the Public Library Association conference just the end of last month, um, there was a whole session on that that I went to because there's some libraries that have been doing it as a matter of convenience, not for a situation like oh, this. Oh, okay. Right. Um, and so we were looking into it as an option um, to add that convenience. We'll but put a drive-through window downstairs for you. <laughs> yes, yes. So there's we're going to look into to, uh, options like that depending on how things um, move forward here. So okay. as we have things like that occur, you are going to have stuff that you push through on your Facebook page, on your web page. Uh, right now, do we have stuff that we're pushing through the city's web page? Yeah, we have a page specifically here shown here de dedicated to COVID-19. So anything with any city facilities will be updated to this page as well, as well as the main city Facebook page. So please, as people want to know what impact uh, this current situation is having on different levels of service within the city. This is a spot you can keep track of it. Uh, we'll try to keep up to date as much as we can with different things that are that have changed with our with our circumstances as we move forward here. Thank you, uh, Chief. Other Chief, <laughs> Nick. Uh, the one thing I would update you on is, I just saw it as I came up here, um, the crossing of the Burlington Junction Railway at High Street um, has been removed. Uh, they're going to be raising their tracks uh, to approximately 21 feet of elevation for river height. Um, so that, that crossing will be down for a period of time until a uh, new crossing can be installed and then the approach works. So that may be a little while as rain and stuff comes through and pouring concrete and whatnot. So. Just wanted to keep you updated and i have to probably update their signage too i know that they have some barriers there but you don't know it until you're on top of it so are they are they going to do the same thing with the crossage on the frontage uh, throughout riverfront park further to the north then mm -hmm. yeah. uh they will be but i have not heard to what elevation that would be changing okay. i don't i don't know what elevation it currently is well depending on how long it would be we may need to have something temporarily there because that's it's the riverfront park is still a mud hole mm -hmm. because of the flooding from last year. So. Yeah. Yes. Noted. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Thanks. I do want to be able to get to work, Nick. Anyway. Anyway. Uh, and do you have anything? I really don't have anything. Just wanted to be okay. here. I, I do want to, I guess, thank you guys for stepping up on this COVID-19 um, and your plans that are in place. It's very important for people to see our leaders lead by example. Okay. Hopefully they will take it serious and understand that they need to promote social distancing and kind of stay. Um, um, okay. Stephanie, do you have anything? Mr. Tesla? No. Jim? Uh, we, a couple of other things that have gone on. I think the police department as well as the city, uh, the city's program for Citizens Academy have both been postponed at this point. Uh, I don't know what that's going to mean, whether they're going to be able to pick up as time goes on or just be done. I think that's kind of dependent on where, how, how things proceed over the upcoming weeks. Um, so there's going to be, there will be several different things that come up like this. Um, from a personnel side, 
I know that uh, we're trying to make sure that we follow through. Um, we want employees to be able to be safe. We want employees also to, if they're sick, to go home. Uh, if they have family that's sick and they have the ability to, we want to make sure that they're able to be home for them too. Uh, we're also trying to balance out where our essential services are and making sure that we don't compromise those. Um, so it's a, it's a kind of a tight wire there. Uh, but we are trying to also practice uh, other things that wash your hands frequently, uh, wiping down surfaces that, that can carry germs on a frequent basis, uh, particularly doorknobs, uh, elevator buttons, etc. cetera. Um, practice social distancing as we're breaking and violating up here uh, closer than six foot together. Um, it's part of the reason that we're having discussions about moving as much electronically as possible. Um, as uh, things come up, uh, with the funding bill that's going through uh, the House and Senate right now, uh, there will be likely some some major changes to how we work through some of our workplace issues with, with the approach on this, and we will adjust as we need to there. But until that bill is done, we, we're not exactly sure how we need to adjust. Does that kind of, kind of, kind of cover where we're at on that stuff? So. All right. Sounds good. <clears throat> Kathleen, do you have anything? No. Sorry you had the coffee fit. No, sorry. Bill? I'm good. Linda? As you eat your green eggs and ham tomorrow and celebrate St. Patty's Day, um, count all your blessings and uh, everybody stay healthy. And uh, dietitian messages, eat your fruits and vegetables. There you go. Matt? No, I'm good. So uh, I, again, just want to urge everybody to take the battle break seriously. Um, they're talking about social distancing. That just means if you're a house hermit, you're going to enjoy this. Um, if you uh, have school age kids, you know, there's a possibility that schools may be canceled if they haven't been already. Um, so, you know, be ready to settle in for a little bit with them. and. Um, you know, it's going to be tempting to go out and go to the movies and, and go out and do stuff. But, uh, you know, if you're showing any symptoms, you don't want to go out and spread those things. So stay at home. And then, um, you know, uh, be considerate when you go out shopping. Um, don't buy up all the toilet paper. We all need it. Um, uh, I work at Walmart, so the, the cereal and the canned goods and everything has been wiped bare. Um, we have stuff coming in every day. It's going to keep coming in. Nothing's changed there. Uh, people have panicked to the point where uh, we've st shut the store down from 11 at night till 6 in the morning just so that we have a chance to restock and clean because we're, we're just getting pounded. So um, don't panic. It's, everything's still coming in like normal. There's nothing to, to get worked up over on that end. And, uh, you know, just be uh, considerate of the other people in the community. So. <coughs> In other words, be Iowans. There we go. We're yeah, better. Be than proud that. of that. So, that's all I have. Is there, there's, there's nothing else in front of the council. We're adjourned. Oh, I need a motion to adjourn. Mm -hmm. A motion to adjourn. Second. Second. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was so ready to go. <laughs> Kathleen, when you're ready. Billups. Sorry. Aye. Kreitzer. Aye. Graham Murray. Aye. Moppin. Aye. 